Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be talking about homogeneous functions again, but this time by applying Euler's theorem. So what does Euler's theorem state exactly and how do we use it? Well, in easy terms, it tells you that the function is homogeneous of degree k. And this implies directly that x times the first partial derivative of this function plus y times the, sec the same first derivative of the second position, in this case y, this part here, is equal to the kth degree times it, the original function. So this is actually the, the full relationship, okay? This is the formula we need to apply, and this, sometimes we need to use this to satisfy and prove that this the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So this is more of a satisfaction equation, okay, to make sure the left equals right. Okay, so how about we look at the look at an example, okay? Let's do the first example. Let me rub this out. Okay. Da, da, da. And I'm going to write the question quickly. And back. So here's the question. And this question came from exercise 3.25 of ESEX materials, okay? ESEX worksheets. So the question tells us that let the function three variables equal x squared times another function g so this is a function we learn how to deal with this and show that this satisfies the identity remember this is again Euler's theorem or Euler's theorem however you pronounce it now how do we show this one exactly well as you can see we just need to calculate the partial derivatives of this function here so first things first let's just calculate the partial derivatives and replace that's really it so the first one, the partial derivative of x. How do we do it? So notice we have x here, x to x here. So actually we have x appears in three different occasions. In fact, this is a product of three variables. So really we need to do the product rule for three variables, which is challenging if you haven't seen if you haven't if you don't know the two variable one at least, but three variable, let's try it. So the way it works, we let something equal the first one. So let's differentiate this. Okay. So if this is the, the one I'm differentiating first, this would be 2x, and then times the g function. Okay, so from now on, I'm just going to call this g, just to save space, times g, plus, and again, so now x squared, now we're going to differentiate the, the first part. So just treat, just imagine this is x over y. So if you differentiate x over y in terms of respect to x, you, and y is a constant, this would just be, times 1 over y, and then you copy the g back in, plus, now again, x squared times, and so we're going to differentiate the second part of the g function, z over x. So, treating z as a constant, the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, and we just pop in the z too. So we flip the sign here to a negative, minus z over x squared. And notice that these two cancel out, so really this entire equation is just minus z. This entire part is minus z times g, times g. And simplifying all this, we just factorize g out to be g times 2x plus x squared over y, collecting terms, minus z. So remember, this is g times this variable. It's not g in a bracket, okay? So it's not a function like this. So it's g times all of this. And that's it. That's how you do the derivative for this function. So let's do the derivative of f dash y. So do the same technique. So now looking at the function here, taking the, since x squared is a constant, we only do derivative once. So derivative of x over y, where x is a constant. So what the so derivative of 1 over y is just minus 1 over y squared. And x comes with it. So it's going to be x squared, you copy it. The derivative we said was minus x over y squared times a function g. And this one simplifies to minus x cubed over y squared times g. Okay, and lastly, we do the function for z. Taking the derivative of fz. Now, back here, it's the same technique. So now z is the main, it's, it's over x. So taking the derivative of this part, it's just going to be 1 over x. So 1 over x times x squared, so x squared times 1 over x and the g, which is just x g. 
That's it, guys. XG, right? Good, good, good. And now, what do we do here? So now we just satisfy this condition. We just smash everything back into here and see what we get. So let me just quickly rub this out, get some space. Okay, I just I don't need this top off anymore. Okay, so let's go ahead and add all these up then. Yeah. So what do we get? Adding up these three, we should get so the left hand side. I'm just gonna say left hand side equals all this, and this should give us. So we're gonna have two x squared times g plus. Since the all terms are g prime, we can just make a big bracket. X cube over y minus z x minus x cube over y plus z x. Okay, and close it times g prime. Let's say that we get some terms cancel now. You know, clearly this goes with this, this goes with this. So all of this is actually gone. Therefore, the left hand side equals 2x squared times g. Now, the question is, does this equal the, does this equal 2f, the initial thing we started in the beginning, does it equal 2f? So, let's check. We said that 2f equals this one, okay? And what do we define as f? f we defined as x squared times g and yes it is it's just double the scale factor that means that this expression is positively homogeneous with degree two okay so f is positively homogeneous with degree two Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. Good luck with any future examinations of this and let me know in the comments if you need anything else. Thanks.